Colin O'Keefe here for LXPN TV. After an extensive process that goes back to a cybersecurity executive order about a year ago, the White House last week unveiled its NIST cybersecurity framework for critical infrastructure providers. To explain its biggest points, we bring in Harriet Pearson. She is the former chief privacy officer at IBM and is now a partner at Hogan Lovells, where she is specializing in security and privacy, and she is also author on the firm's blog, Chronicle of Data Protection. Harriet, first, what are the biggest takeaways from this, the final version of the NIST cybersecurity framework? What stands out to you as being the most noteworthy? Sure. Hi, Colin. Thank you. Um, key takeaways of the NIST framework. Uh, first, this is a very influential new uh, tool to use for cybersecurity. Uh, it represents a year's worth of work from not just NIST, which is a very expert technical agency, but also from thousands of business and technical experts from the private sector who together created a framework that I believe will be looked at as the standard of care uh, for cybersecurity. Uh, second is that for the first time, what we have in the framework is a common language. This is not written in technical ease. This is written in English accessible language that can be used from everybody from the board to the CEO, to the general counsel, to the IT department to say, are we doing what needs to be done to manage cybersecurity risk? It's not just for critical infrastructure either. If you're a, a company that is not been designated as critical infrastructure by the Department of Homeland Security, um, you can still look at this, and I believe, uh, for example, if there's a breach in the future, even if it's a, a non-CI or a non-critical infrastructure environment, uh, it would be used, this framework, by a regulator perhaps, or by certainly a plaintiff's lawyer to say, uh, how are you doing on cyber, and were you aligned with this influential new framework? Third takeaway is expect to see a lot of outreach promoting the use of the framework by government agencies who are going to be speaking to the companies that they regulate, whether it's energy, health, telecommunications, uh, other financial services, et cetera, a lot of outreach from them and from industry leaders as well, so that you see uh, references to the framework pop up, both potentially in procurement policy, if you're a government contractor, or in commercial contracts, if you're a vendor to one of those companies that's announcing that they're going to be using the framework. I see. So second, the president said with this release that, quote, much more work needs to be done to enhance our cybersecurity. So on that point, what looms ahead in the world of cybersecurity? What should we expect to see in the relatively near future? Well, this certainly is an issue of, of our era. Um, I was fortunate to be at the White House when the framework was released, and the chief of staff of the White House was there and led with the observation that cybersecurity is one of the last systemic threats that faces the United States. I believe we're going to continue to see pressure and attention paid to this issue and what the private sector needs to do about it. One manifestation of that attention that um, unfortunately will be part of the landscape for us lawyers will be every time there's an incident or a breach, um, litigation and investigations will follow, like night follows day. And part of the uh, challenge of addressing what may be uh, causes of action that may not uh, pursue and be successful or may is to figure out how do you defend against those kinds of causes of action. One of the best things one can do is emphasis on prevention and uh, documenting that your behavior was in accordance with the relevant standards and legislation and, and, and proposed uh, and, and real uh, requirements. That's why the framework, now that it's appeared, is going to be very influential and important in that respect too. I see. It's going to be interesting to watch to see what role this plays in, as you mentioned, contract negotiations and in uh, response to future data breaches as well. Uh, once again, that was Harriet Pearson of Hogan Lovell. For more of her insight, be sure to visit hldataprotection.com. Thank you for joining me today, Harriet. Thank you, Colin.